This is the RTX 4090. It released October the 12th, 2022 for a US MSRP of $1599. About one year ago, I purchased my 4090, and today I wanna share what that experience has been like over the last 12 months. Hi, this is Erock on Tech, and this is the pros and cons of the RTX 4090. Okay, the main reason why I'm making this video is because I've owned the 4090 for about a year now, and I really wanna share what my experience has been like. And I do feel like this video will be relevant for the people looking to buy a 5090. And also, believe it or not, I still get comments from time to time where people are telling me they are actively saving up to purchase a 4090. Now, my recommendation would be at this stage in the game, July 2024, don't buy a 4090. If you're going to buy a 90 class series card, wait for the 5090. To me, that makes the most sense. Now, I do understand some people have the buying strategy of, well, let's wait and see, let's let the 5090 come out, and then hopefully 4090s will get cheaper in price before all the inventory is gone. And look, that logic is sound. It has worked in the past for people on different GPU purchasing decisions, but I wouldn't put all of my eggs in that one basket. So just food for thought. Now, I will tell you up front, there are more negatives about the 4090 than there are positives. And so we're gonna talk about the negatives up front or the cons, and then on the tell in. We'll talk about the benefits or the pros of the 4090. I've owned the 4090 for about a year now. Here are the things that have absolutely bothered me over the last year. Number one is the price. The price of the 4090 is way too much. It's way too expensive. I cannot really justify that to anybody. Any normal standard just gamer out there does not need a 4090. It is just way too much money. In fact, I was never planning to buy a 4090 at all. But the reason why I was able to justify it is because I opened up a Patreon account. I have active Patreon members who are incredibly awesome. And so between the Patreon members and the little bit of ad revenue I make on this channel, I was able to write the card off as a business expense and then also justify the upfront costs because of you know the YouTube ad revenue and my awesome Patreon community. But that's me, I'm a content creator that has a YouTube channel that is classified as a business, if you will. So I was able to justify it. And the worst part about it is that it's $1,599 starting out or $1,600, and it only goes up from there. We have models of the 4090 that meet and exceed $2,000. I don't care if the number one game on the planet that I wanted to play more than anything else could only be ran on a $2,000 GPU. There is no way under the sun I would ever pay $2,000 for a GPU. That is, that, that's definitely past my breaking point at that point. So yeah, the price is just stupid. Now, the other thing that really bothers me with the RTX 4090 is the power connector. There's two issues with this. Number one, the standard default out of the box adapter they give you is absolutely hideous. It's one connector coming off the 4090 that branches into four other connections and it looks awful. It is absolutely atrocious. If you have a beautiful looking PC, this is a good way to make it not beautiful anymore is by using that adapter. And on top of that, it just clutters up everything because it's four connections. In addition to that, even if you go with something like cable mod, for example, you run the risk of a melting adapter. I think at this point, we all know about the melting adapter issues. Northridge Fix has covered this topic many, many times here on YouTube. Gamers Nexus has covered it a couple of times. Jay's Two Cents has covered it. And in addition to that, you can find it all over Reddit. Yes, the 4090s still have a melting connector issue even today in July of 2024. Now, it's not as bad as it was before, I don't think. There's been multiple recalls on the cable mod adapters and all of that stuff, but at the end of the day, it is still a point of concern. Now, thankfully, I haven't had any issues. My 4090 has never caught fire. I'm very grateful for that. I've had zero problems with it but I am not 100% confident that this thing will not eventually catch on fire. And if Nvidia carries this connector over to the 5090, it's probably going to be another point of concern unless they radically redesign it somehow but I don't see that happening. Now, there's a lot we don't know about the 5090, so that remains to be seen. But if they carry this exact same connection over, it's gonna be the same problem all over again. So something to be aware of for sure. Now, the other issue with the 4090 is simply the size of the card. You see, because of the size of the 4090, you have two primary issues. The first issue is simply the fact that there are now a lot of cases you cannot build in because the card is too large. Now, if you have the Failner's Edition model, I think that's technically the smallest 40 90 out there and so that allows you to even fit that card into some mini itx cases which is pretty cool i think most people 
people probably who own a 4090 don't have a Founders Edition model. They probably have an AIB card like myself. I have the PNY XLR8 model. And yes, my 4090 is absolutely massive. And because of that, there are a lot of cases I cannot build in. The Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic, the original, the one that started it all, the one that revolutionized the PC case market that everyone decided to copy. I cannot build my PC in that case. My 4090 is so big, I cannot shut the glass panel on that case. Now, if I got the Lee & Lee 011 XL model, then yeah, maybe, but the standard version, no, it doesn't work. The other problem with the size of the 4090 is GPU sag. Now, this is not a problem exclusive to the 4090. Obviously, the 4080s are about the same size, and so they also suffer from this, but basically, you will have some GPU sag, and so now you have to start looking into different adapters and GPU anti-sag holders. That's one of the reasons why I like my case so much that I'm currently using, which is the Fantex NV5. It has a built-in anti-sag bracket specifically for big GPUs like the 4090. So that's in incredibly awesome, but unfortunately the majority of PC case manufacturers are not thinking like that. They're not doing that. So you have to bring your own anti-sag bracket. And so it's one more thing to think about. It's one more thing to be concerned about. It's one more thing you have to buy. And that sucks. And yes, some of the 4090s do come with anti-sag brackets in the box, but those brackets are not compatible with a lot of motherboard case combinations. So that itself is not a perfect solution. So yeah, the size of the 4090 is definitely a problem. Okay, and now it's time to brief talk about power draw. If I didn't mention it, people would be upset about it. But I also understand if I don't say that the 4090 is an efficient card, then people will also be upset about it. Hold your horses. We have a pro section coming up. Wait for that. But for the con section, yes, out of the box, default stock settings, the 4090 can pull in a lot of wattage. Now it does depend on your specific model. Some models cap out at 450 watts, which let's be real, that is a lot. And other models go all the way up to 600 watts. And if you're in certain parts of the world, electricity costs are extra high right now. And so that's not really something you probably wanna buy and put into your system. Now, thankfully I'm in America and currently electricity costs are not that bad. So for me personally, this is not that big of a deal, but I do understand and I do recognize that in certain parts around the world, a 4090 would probably not be the best move for certain people's utility bills. Okay, now it's time to finally be positive and talk about the pros of the 4090. And first up is the gaming performance. It is no secret, the 4090 is the fastest gaming GPU on the market so far. There is currently nothing on the market that can match or beat the 4090. There are exceptions to the rule, of course, like the 7900 XTX outperforms the 4090 in Call of Duty, for example, but that is the exception to the rule. The rule itself is that the 4090 is the king of gaming. There is no other GPU that can match it or beat it. It is a beast. And so because of that, you definitely have that peace of mind of knowing, hey, if I have the best gaming GPU on the market, and if I'm struggling to run something, then you know two things to be true. The first thing is that nobody else can run it any better. And the second thing you know to be true is that it's probably not your hardware. It is probably a game optimization issue. And how many times have we seen that over the last couple of years? How many times have we seen a game come out and you're looking to play that game and everything run buttery smooth because you have spent all this money on your brand new gaming PC and now you're dropping frames left and right and you're thinking, man, wow, is my hardware broken? But it's not your hardware, it is the game optimization. We have seen that so many times over the last couple of years. It's one of the biggest downfalls about PC gaming currently. But with that being said, at least you know if you have something like the 4090, well, hey, it's probably not my hardware, it's actually probably the game. And then a quick Google search, you'll see very quickly that other people have the same issues as you. And yes, it is in fact the game optimization issue. But the game performance of the 4090 is absolutely incredible. And so that's a huge benefit here. Now, the next big benefit for the 4090 is the content creation performance of the 4090. I use my 4090 to make all of my videos. I use the AV1 encoder to encode it and upscale all of my videos to 4K 60 FPS. I shoot in 1080p 60 and I upscale to 4K 
4K60 using the AV1 encoder on the 4090. And that is something that is incredibly awesome. In addition to that, it is an NVIDIA GPU. So that also means you have the CUDA core performance for applications that take advantage of that. You also have an in-bank encoder on there as well. So if you're using an application that hasn't been updated to take advantage of AV1, no sweat, just switch over and use the in-bank encoder. And that is something that was pretty big early on in OBS, for example. And then of course you have the 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, I also understand that a lot of people would say, well, you don't need a 4090 to take advantage of all those things. And that's very true because other 40 series cards, much cheaper 40 series cards, also have in-bank encoders and AV1 encoders. And the 7900 XTX also has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, and it also has an AV1 encoder. But for this video, we're talking specifically about what makes the 4090 great. And this is definitely one of the great benefits of the 4090. It is a content creation beast. I'm not saying there's not good substitutes substitutions for it, but I'm just saying if you do have a 4090, that is definitely a big benefit of the card. And now I want to talk about the cooling performance of the 4090. In short, it is phenomenal. It is a card you could technically put on a water block and have a custom loop and all of that, but I would wager you're not really going to gain that much more by putting it on water versus keeping the existing air cooler that comes with the card. You see, because the card is so large, the air cooler is also very large, or you can make the argument, well, the card is so large because the air cooler is large. Either way, these cards are beefy and they have really, really good coolers on them. And so in certain situations with a 4090, I'm able to be in the 50s. You can see a video that I did where I did the 4090 versus 2023 games and there's Forza Motorsport there, native 4K, ultra preset, with ray tracing, and I'm hovering at 54C. Now I will admit that is the exception to the rule. That's not standard. Typically when I'm gaming, I'm usually looking more like this. I'm in the 60s somewhere, sometimes 62, sometimes 64C, but I'm never, never getting anywhere near 70C. Now the exception to that would be whenever I tried the Tower 300. I don't know if you saw that video, but I put my 4090 in the Tower 300 trying to make a Dragon Ball Z build and that did not go well. The card hit ADC and it was a combination, yeah, probably of the case, but also my card specifically, it just did not like that orientation at all whatsoever. And so now I'm back in my Fantex NV5 in a normal mounted configuration. And in this configuration, the cooler takes care of itself. The 4090 is running totally fine. Again, some games, even at native 4K, I'm in the 50s. And in other games, I'm in the low to mid mid 60s worst case scenario. The cooling performance of the 4090 is truly phenomenal. And honestly, this bleeds over to the 4080 because most 4080s share the same design as their 4090 counterparts. However, a 4080 only caps out at around 320 watts. And so that card is gonna run even colder on average. Anyway, with all that being said, the cooling performance on the 4090 is truly great. And that is a big benefit. And now I wanna switch over and talk about efficiency. The 4090 is efficient. Can it draw a lot of power? Absolutely, 100%. Like I said, my card maxes out at 450 watts. However, you will see here from some old benchmarks, my card never really hits 450 watts. I'm typically always above 400, but well below 450. I'm never coming close to 450. Digital Foundry review the 4090 on day one, and they have a chart in their video, and I will link this in the description down below. You can see this chart, and they talk about energy consumption, and they talk about how efficient the 4090 is when compared to the 3090. And as you can see in Cyberpunk 2077, the 4090 had a per frame power reduction of 37.36%. And Metro Exodus saw a reduction of 31.51%. And Forza Horizon 5 saw a massive reduction of 51%. Now that's not saying the 4090 is the most efficient card on the market or anything like that. But when you compare gen over gen, 4090 to 3090, the 4090 is massively better in terms of overall energy efficiency. So yes, the card can in fact pull a lot of wattage, but it is efficient and you can implement things like a power limit. I've seen some people talk about how they have power limited their 4090s down to 70%, but they still retain about 90% of its overall power performance, which is pretty impressive. But I've also seen people say that they can't go down that low to 70%. They have to keep it around 80%. So it's probably going to vary depending on the GPU model you have specifically, but you can also undervolt the card and, you know, limit the voltage and stuff like that on it. So there's things you can do 
They get the temperatures even lower. They get the power consumption even lower. And that's what's awesome about PC gaming in general is that you have control over your hardware, unlike consoles. Always remember that. So in conclusion, here's where I stand. Don't buy a 4090. It's way too late in the game for it. If you're hoping to find one on sale closer to the 5090 launch, sure, fine, go for it. But my recommendation is if you want a 90 series card, wait for the 5090. And if you can buy a 4090 on the used market for way below MSRP, go for it. Awesome. The cheaper you can get the card, the better the value proposition. But do not go pay retail for one of these things in July or later of 2024. It does not make sense. Overall, the 4090 does have some very nice benefits, right? It has good efficiency, has a really good cooler on it. The gaming performance is second to none. The content creation is awesome, but I do think the cons outweigh the card. The price is astronomical. The card is absolutely massive and that limits you on where you can build your PC, what cases you can use. The power connector is definitely a concern. And of course, all the other things that I mentioned in this video, I'm tired. And I'm at the end of the video. Every time I get to the end of the video, I'm like, ah, just finish the video. But at the end of the day, those are the pros and cons of the 4090. And that's kind of what my experience has been like for the last year. But let me know your comments down below. Do you have a 4090? How has it treated you? Have you had any connector related issues? Have you had any issues at all with your 4090? I'm very curious to know what your experience has been like. Are you happy with it? Are you happy that you paid all that money for it? Or do you regret it? Let me know, I look forward to talking to you. If you're new, get subscribed, hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. And until next time, E-Rock out.